da daily devotions with Pastor Sutton. I'm just making sure the microphone was working there. I glanced down and things, colors changed again. I think there was an update. Eek. And I don't figure that out until um, I'm in the midst of it. So good morning. It is Friday, December 9th. Um, and we are here for our morning devotions together. I'll tell you what, there's some things going on in the world and in our nation right now that I would just absolutely love to go on probably a 30-minute rant with you, but I'm not. We're going to focus on uh, God's Word. If it leads us into that rant, well, then so be it. Sort of a casual dress day today. I'm not planning on making any visits, uh, get the bulletin done for today, get two sermons written for Sunday, because the two churches are getting different messages and different readings, and uh, focus on those things today. So, kind of a warm sweater, red turtleneck day. I guess I got my Santa clothes on. All right, well, uh, good morning. Let's see who's here with us as we're starting off this morning. Uh, good morning, Jerry. Mushtak, good evening. Verna, good morning. Michael and Karen, good morning. Uh, Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Deb, Grant, and Ann, good morning to you guys. Glenn, good morning. There's Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. Renee, good morning. Gray and chilly day. You know what? That's what it is here. It's not as cold here today as it was uh, yesterday, but it is gray and it is chilly. And there's Bonnie chiming in. Good morning to her and to all of you lurking in the background. Hello. Good morning. Glad you're here. Those watching now or later, um, good day to you. So, uh, no commemoration this morning. Um, so I guess we'll just go right into this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, I have my order of or my treasury of daily prayer here with the uh, with the morning order in front of me and so uh, i put my ribbon back in there in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in the morning O lord you hear my voice in the morning i prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day O lord open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, our psalm today, did I put it? Yeah, Psalm 17, verses 6 through 15. Psalm 17. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Hey, Connie, good morning. Uh, wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me, they close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They have now surrounded our steps. They have set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked of your sword, or by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord. From men of the world whose portion is in this life, you fill their womb with treasure. They are satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yes, the cold continues. In fact, it dragged me out of bed at about 5 this morning with no hope of continuing to sleep. Not good. Although maybe better, I don't know. 
Bonnie's questioning whether it's the same cold or if I've gotten a new one now. Connie, Robin, good morning to you guys. Jill and John, hello there. Um, yeah. I call upon you for you will answer me, O God. He does not forget his people. Incline your ear, hear my words. Show your steadfast love. Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. That's the hand of power and authority. It's the hand uh, which, which the uh, creed tells us of Jesus ascending to the hand, the right hand of power. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the enemy, the foe, the old wicked foe, like a lion eager to tear, young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord. Confront him and subdue him, which he did at the cross. He did at the cross. Delivering our soul from wickedness by uh, the sword of his mouth, the, the word of God, the scriptures, the promise. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. You know, we don't... We don't always... As people, especially these days, have the best confession um, of that last part. That is to say that on the last day, um, our bodies will be raised. These bodies, the ones we're in, um, but without sin, purified, perfect, and glorified. These are the bodies that we will have, right? Um, that... that the body that lies in the grave is the one that the Lord will resurrect. Um, we've become, how shall I say, we forget the importance of the flesh, the body, not the sin, but the body that God has created for us. I mean, every one of us was made by God in the womb of our mother. Um, yeah, I know. We, we know medically, if you will, scientifically, how babies are made. Um, we know that the, um, the reproductive cell of the father and the reproductive cell of the mother come together. Um, the egg is fertilized and, and divides and becomes a child. Um, but there is a third involved there that is, that is God who sparks life, right? Science cannot tell us today how you are you and not somebody else right that's that's the lord at work that's the the breath of god the racha in the in the hebrew the pneumatos in the um in the in the greek uh, the, the the holy spirit or the spirit that god puts in you that that is you right i knew you before the foundation of the world i, I knew you um before you were formed in the womb, God says to Jeremiah. Um, and we forget that this fearfully, wonderfully made thing, which is racked by sin in this world, is our body. And it was given to us by God. It was created for us by God. And it's sustained even in this world by God. And, and on the last day, we'll be raised. And our practices at both ends of life are not helpful in confessing that. First of all, abortion, right? Um, the, the murder of, of a conceived born person inside of its mother who's supposed to protect it. Um, and at the other end of life, we've got uh, euthanasia, right? When somebody becomes too ill, we it hasn't been a it's not a condoned practice in the United States, but in other countries, even young people who are just dissatisfied with their life in, um, is it Sweden now or Finland or? Well, the Scandinavian. Huh? Multiple countries. Well, Bonnie said multiple countries. It started in one of the Scandinavian countries, though. Very practical people, Scandinavians. If you were upset with your life, you'd just go and get killed. They'll, they'll put you down. Hey, Linda and, Don, and, and uh, Keith, good morning. Um, and, and further, when a person passes, when a person is deceased, when God comes to claim that 
spirit and take it back uh, to await the resurrection or judgment. Um, what do we do with the body? Well, the faithful thing is, is bodily burial, but we burn it up, right? Which is a sign of judgment. We destroy this thing that God gave us. It may just be a tent that's a temporary dwelling place, um, but it is our eternal dwelling place also in the resurrection, uh, perfect and glorified without sin. Um, but it's this body. And the faithful confession of that is to place that body in a casket and place that casket in the ground to wait, await the day of the resurrection. Burning the body up for multiple reasons does not confess, does not say to the world, I believe, as Job says, on, on that day, I will stand before the, my Redeemer and see him with my own eyes. Not the eyes of another, not the eyes of a different body, but my eyes perfect and glorified. That means no glasses. I won't need glasses to see him. I will see him, behold him with my own eyes. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness when I awake. I shall be satisfied with your likeness. All right, let's move on to our, on to our reading for today. We're in Isaiah chapter 26, verses 1 through 19. Isaiah 26, 1 to 19. In that day, this song will be the song in the land of Judah. And here we have um, a long Hebrew poetry again. We have a strong city. He sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed in, on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. He has humbled the inhabitants of the height and uh, the height. Uh, he, hmm. he has humbled the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city. He lays it low, lays it low to the ground, cast it, casts it to the dust. The foot tramples at the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. The path of the righteous is level. You make level the way of the righteous. And the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. If favor is shown to the wicked, he does not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he deals corruptly and does not see the majesty of the Lord. O Lord, your hand is lifted up, but they do not see it. Let them see your zeal for your people and be ashamed. Let the fire of your adversary, for your adversaries consume them. O Lord, you will ordain peace for us. For you have indeed done us for us all your... O Lord, you will ordain peace for us, for you have indeed done for us all our works. O Lord our God, other lords besides you have ruled over us, but your name alone we bring to remembrance. They are dead, they will not live. They are shades, they will not arise. To that end, you have visited them with destruction and wiped out all remembrance of them. But you have increased the nation, O Lord. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have enlarged all the borders of the land. O Lord, in distress they sought you. They poured out a whispered prayer when your discipline was upon them. Like a pregnant woman who writhes and cries out in her pangs when she is near to giving birth. So were we because of you, O Lord. We were pregnant, we writhed, but we have given birth to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth, and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your dew is the dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Now, isn't that interesting? I go on a little bit of a rant about the resurrection, and Isaiah shows us the resurrection. And friends, I didn't read this ahead of time. I, well, no, I didn't. I mean, I've read it, but today I did not prepare. I, as I said before, I just look at these things and see what's here. Open the gates. Raise your head, almighty gates. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Those who are in Christ. The gates of heaven. The gates of the kingdom of heaven. The ones who you keep in perfect peace, mind stayed on you because they trust in you. For you are the everlasting rock. God has humbled the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city. And the foot that tramples it is the foot of the poor and the needy. Those who are in Christ, right? The, the high and lofty and mighty will be fallen. And under the footsteps of those who recognize the poverty of their spirit and their need for God's salvation, will walk upon that ash as they go to the heavenly kingdom. The path of the righteous is level. That's John the Baptist in, in uh, week past here. Make, way, make straight the paths of the Lord. Through the confession of sin, repentance, and the forgiveness of that sin, the righteous becomes a level way. In the paths of your judgment, we wait. If favor is shown to the wicked, and sometimes in this world it does appear that way, he does not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he deals corruptly, and he does not see the majesty of the Lord, and will not see it, right? The, the wicked are judged already. Your hand is lifted up, and they do not see it. An uplifted hand is holding a sword for the destruction, right? So his hand is lifted against them, but they do not see it. They do not see the judgment coming. Let the fire for your adversaries consume them. See, that's one of my issues with cremation is that the sign, the symbol of judgment in the scriptures is always fire. Destruction by fire, consumption by fire. O Lord, you will ordain peace for us. You have indeed done for us all our works. You've done everything for us, Lord. There's nothing for us to do except trust in you. And even that you've given us through the promises of Christ, through the waters of our baptism. There have been other lords, false gods, but your name alone we bring to remembrance. Those other gods are dead. They're shades. They will not rise. And to that end, you have visited them with destruction, wiped out all remembrance of them. But you have increased the nation, O Lord. And this is... This, this, this last part is the bringing in of the Gentiles into the promises of Israel, right? And in the time of Isaiah, God's people were Israel. They were the children of Jacob, the descendants of Abraham. But he increased the nation, right? With the coming of Christ and Christ's rejection by the Jews, the Gentiles are brought into the faith. They're brought into the family of Israel in Christ, we don't, we Gentiles don't, don't carry the bloodline of Jacob or Abraham necessarily. I mean, we could go digging into genetics and find out, um, but th that's not the point. The point is that we are in Christ and Christ is of the lineage of Jacob. He, he was a Jew. And so we are brought into him and in him, we are Israel, the new Israel in, in Christ. You have increased the nation, O Lord, increased the nation, and you have glorified, you have enlarged the borders of the land. You brought those who were lost in darkness into your marvelous light. In distress they sought you, they poured out a whispered prayer when your dis discipline was upon them, and like a pregnant woman they writhed, we writhed. But we have given birth to nothing, to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth. And the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. You're dead. The dead of God, the dead in Christ, shall live. 
their bodies shall rise. Even King David in his day, even Abraham in his day, even Moses in his day, we're not counting on the salvation that comes through their keeping of the law and their works. But as it is said of Abraham, his faith was counted to him as righteousness. They were anticipating the coming of Christ, knowing that God passed over former sins because God knew that Christ was coming to atone for our sins. So dwell in the dust, you who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your dew is a dew of light, and the earth shall give birth to the dead. Out of the graves will come all people, those in Christ to eternal joy in the heavenly places, to those in those who died outside of Christ to eternal shame and punishment. But the joy we have in Christ is that we know, regardless of all things, whatever happens in this world, as I said, I would love to go on a rant today. But we know that in Christ, regardless of all things, God rules. And the last day we'll stand before our Lord in our own flesh and see him as he sees us. And we will be, as St. John says, like him. We know not what it is, but we know we will be like him on that last day. Glorified, purified, raised from the dead, living in eternity with him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord, we implore you, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the devil and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And on this Friday morning for ourselves and others, God of all grace and mercy, the rising of the sun, the drawing of breath, the place where I live, the enjoyment of family and friends and food are all gifts from you. And if that were too little, you have given me still more. Through the death and resurrection of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, you have given me everlasting salvation and a place with you in your kingdom. Give these same gifts to all people. Let them see your daily provision. Let them hear the good news of the gospel preached. Allow them to receive mercy and grace in the outstretched arms of Jesus, who was high and lifted up on the cross for them. Help them to confess your saving name boldly and confidently. Heal the sick, deliver the afflicted, strengthen the weak, care for the lonely, persecuted, and oppressed. Restore the lost, give faith to the dying, comfort the grieving. Especially this day, O oh Lord, we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Deanna. And we ask, Lord, that you hear all who call upon your name in faith. In my own moments of sorrow, grant me a heart willing to cast my cares upon you. 
Lead and direct my life again today. Purify my thoughts. Cleanse my sins. Guard and keep me from every temptation. Make me faithful in my daily responsibilities. Help me walk in faithful obedience according to your commandments. And let me continue to grow in your wisdom and grace. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotions to a close on this Friday, December 9th. God's peace be with you. We'll be back here tomorrow morning uh, for our daily devotion together, a little time on Saturday morning. So in the meantime, God's peace be with you.